That's such a great question. I, you, you know, I always say for me, it was my relationship to music ha- happened very young. You know, I mean, like, like I think anyone who has music as a companion throughout their life, I think it starts real, really, really young. You get obsessed with certain records. And I had this little Fisher Price record player and I had 45s. Uh, and I would listen to the Pointer Sisters over and over. There was one song called Jump, and I'd listen to it over and over and over again, and then I had a Madonna track, and I had a Van Halen track. But Madonna was, I was that era of, like, young, young girl. So she was my Taylor Swift, and I remember listening to her music and being like, I this is my future. And then I would break it all down. So I'd listen to a verse and I'd go back and I'd try to understand it. And then I'd listen to the pre-chorus and I didn't realize what I was doing at the time, but I was basically completely, I would deconstruct music in my head to learn it. And then I realized that I didn't share that with anyone else in my family that I was living with. I would lock myself in rooms as I got older and older, and I would discover music on my own. My parents, my mom and Kurt, weren't like big music. There wasn't like a lot of music in the house. It was classical music. And Kurt loves little rock music, you know, like he loves ZZ Top and things like that. But I didn't have, I didn't, I wasn't raised in the musical household that I didn't understand where it came from. So I would then start listening to like, I remember when I discovered Neil Young and I tried to like share it with my family and they didn't have the same kind of like soul connection to it where I'm like, what do you mean? This is the greatest thing I've ever heard in in my life. And then I just started to write. It's for me, it always started with my diet, my poetry. I'd write, I'd rewrite other people's songs. Um, So I would listen to a song, I'd listen to a Bob Dylan song, and I'd write my own lyrics over Bob Dylan's songs or Neil Young's song. But it was like an exercise for me, like what would my words sound like to this music that I love so much if it was my, you know, young mind. And then I started playing the piano and and then it was just my like, it was just my secret kind of happy place, writing music and playing music. and. Singing was something I always wanted to do, musical theater. I love to sing, but writing was is like, that's where I like would disappear to, I guess. Yeah. And then when I started, you know, g- getting cast in movies, my career went from like zero to a hundred very fast. And there isn't really a lot of, at that time, if you became well-known as an actor, kind of then trying to become a singer is sort of like, don't break what's not broken, you know? And so I realized and kind of went, well, I guess that won't happen for me. But I still, you know, kept it to myself and continued to write music. I always wanted people, like, for me, it was like any movie that had music in it, it was like, I'm ready and down, you know? The concept for me of making a record, like, there were times that people were like, would you make a record? And they were like, we could get great writers, we could do this. And I'm like, I, that's not how I see music. You know, for me, music really, and, and as, I mean, people can, I guess, get that get that from the men that I've, you know, cult, like loved in my life. You know, for me, music is a, a process that is like, you give it everything. And it has to be, it had to be authentic for me to, in order to do it or else I don't know why I'd be doing it. And I don't think that I would have been ready to put that kind of vulnerability out in the world to be like judged and criticized if I was any younger than I am now, you know. And and COVID and the lockdown really is what made me realize like if I don't make a record, it will be the great regret of my life. And I have to do it. So in COVID, I just went, I'm just going to start saying yes. Because I used to say no a lot to people and singing with people and doing things. And um, I said, I'm just, I'm going to say yes. Every time someone asks me to sing, I'm going to say yes. And then just see where that takes me. And within six months, I was writing with Linda. And that was amazing because I'd never collaborated in writing. You know, I, I, I'd never had anyone to push me and in with structure and with you know, with the muscle for me was so intimate 
that to like work with someone who kind of is facilitating it differently than I'd ever had was was such a great writing experience. She heard me sing at this charity Zoom. I had recorded a song with a friend of mine who's a great a great songwriter producer and I recorded kind of an acoustic version of a big hit song that he had done and she heard it and was like and just cold called me and was basically like what are you doing why don't you sing more and I was like well that's my I, I'm going to say yes so that's what I'm doing now and I want to sing more but I really she's like well what do you want to make a record I'm like I'm thinking about it she goes well come in the studio and let's you know I got a song I'd like you to sing and I sang that song and then after I sang it she sat me down and said do you write music and I yes and she said well let's write some music together it's like cool yes and then I I put like a month aside I said I'm going to just October I'm just going to start writing music and I went into it with like I for me this is not like I don't have I was like I don't want to have expectations of this I just want to do it and not not get ahead of it. So that was really nice because it was like no pressure. It's like I, you know, I'm not writing from a place of like having to feel like I need to compete or having to feel like this is going to be my livelihood. Um I could write from like the mo the purest place um and the most fun place. Like I could experiment. And we wrote 26 songs in two and a half weeks. It was we literally was like it was like a just we couldn't stop. At one point we wrote three songs in a day and we just looked at each other like it's not even like four. It was like we need to stop at some point. You know, we're going to have like four records, uh four albums. There's one song on the album that we Linda and I wrote in 10 minutes and it was like it felt like a channeling. It was like it came through and we just looked at each other like wow, okay. All right, like we're in a zone. Danny Fujikawa my partner also wrote with us so it was the three of us and so fun um and really really wonderful for me to have like a little intimate writing bubble Oh yeah I mean I I remember at some point I did an interview when I was like in my 20s and I remember someone asking me like you know why aren't you making a record and and I was like because it needs it needs to be mine like i need to be ready to do, to like completely immerse myself in it and that takes time you know and focus and it won't be like a half ass thing i need it to feel i need to like really be it needs to be all about the music and that time i guess will present itself when it does you know and so yeah i mean even you know lyrically and melodically when i think about all of the music it's you know every lyric is mine every word it's just you know it's scary because <laughs> for me it's almost like showing this little like piece of me that i've never done i've never done that you know i've i've always been able to you know hide behind other people's words um but i'm not going to do that anymore. i think so but my hope is that it will feel like i've always been very honest i don't like i'm not very calculated You know, I think that I sometimes I wish I was more calculated in in my career, but I'm very like spontaneous in the way that I do things. I think people feel that and know. I think the people who do know about me will will the music will make sense. It won't feel it'll feel honest and they'll know that. But uh I think the interesting thing for me is when I talk about the songs because I realize that they are very specific. you know and i have written them about things in my life that are very personal but i don't want to necessarily at this moment share exactly what that is cuz then then people won't have their own relationship to the song and a lot of these songs like some of these songs i write as a perspective of a partner on about me so like there's one song on on the album that is like i was an ex talking about me in the relationship. So there's a lot of different places that I've been, that I wrote from in this album but they're they're all very specific. So it'll be fun. I hope this album has good legs cuz then I'll go back and I'll be like so that's what this song was about, you know. 
You know, it's one of the more sort of pop fo- uh, centric songs on the record, on the album. It's a really like nice tempo that you sort of dance to. But to me, it's like the roll roll down the window in your car kind of te- song. Um, and this, what's what's fun about this song is that I we almost dropped the song. It almost didn't make the record because when we, we wrote it and it had such a, we loved the hook so much, but when Danny and Johan were producing it, it's like we, we couldn't figure it out. Um, it wasn't, it just wasn't working. And then Danny, Danny wouldn't give up on it. Danny was like, it's too good. He's like, we gotta, we gotta, fi- I gotta figure it out. And so he went into our home studio and just like came out at like midnight and was like, I figured it out. I unlocked it. And we went in the car and I was like, oh, my God, it's so fun. And like I and and so the song kind of had a disco, very organic disco Donna Summers thing as we wrote it. But then when we got it in the studio, it kind of was too derivative for me. And, you know, I. I wanted it to feel more more poppy, more more like I wanted to hear it in a in a in a nightclub. And so the organic nature that's in a lot of the record, it didn't work as well with this the song that I was trying to get to and we just figured it out. And so we got that mix of like the organic band feeling with more pop centric mm-hmm. sounds and stuff. And then lyrically you, this is I will talk about this because it's it was it was the song for me when well, you'll see with the album I, I I like word I like lyrics and I'm the kind of I like almost have to edit back my lyrics usually like um I overwrite and then I edit <laughs> for talk about love I I really wanted it to have a narrative that told a story that felt like it was simple and clear but the song is really about it's kind of has a dual meaning. The song as a whole is about, you know, this is, we should be talking more about love. Like we talk about a lot of things and, 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 and we're living in a very complex time. And the thing I think we need the most is to talk about it, talk about what love is and why it's so hard for us. Why, why is it so hard to connect at the purest, at that, that pure, in that purest place? Um, And then I wanted to turn that into like a fun song that wasn't too heady. (laughs) And yeah, and and that and that I think that is really what the record is. The whole album, like it kind of encompasses the feeling of what the whole album will feel like when people hear it. Because of that, because of the message of it and the and the and the album and the songs to follow will have a lot. I mean, there's I mean, it was hard, actually, because we have one song that we we we're thinking of leading with that's a little bit more ballad into rock vibes. Um, <laughs> but talk about love really is embodies what the record is. And, and you you know, you're going to feel, I like the tempo where it sits as the leading song, because there are songs on the record that do have more pop. There's like another song that's probably a little even more poppy than this song. But then there's songs that really sit in Americana and some country influence. Um, so I felt like this was a the perfect lead in. And I can't wait. I'm excited for that part too, because there's a lot to discover. I didn't try to fit it into like a genre. I just wrote what felt good and chose the songs that felt the best. You know, I've got kids that are really musical and love music. So I'm very immersed in like the world today and listening to pop music and underground, all the underground artists that they're loving. And kids want to want to get weird again. You know, it's like there's some great music being written out there. And these kids want bands, they want real instrument, they want to be in a band, they want real instruments. I believe in it. I believe that we're going to get more of that coming our way, you know. They're into some cool stuff and and I love it. I, I love I love the music scene for the young kids. They're really into 90s music. Oh, it's so fun to talk about. It's <laughs> You're the first person I've really like done this with. That, like, So it's different, you know, this, Writing this album was different because usually I just sit at a piano and 
I write together. Like I'll write a song on the piano. Uh, I do my like gibberish, but then I'll I like to figure out the song as I'm sitting there all by myself, and then I'll go and lay it down. Um, with the sounds that I hear it, I'll like take it into my studio and then I'll hear it if I'm like, oh, you know, I want this to be more guitar focused or more organ. Like I'll, I'll re, I'll put it in and sketch it out in myself. This process was, was way different because I'm, I was collaborating with Danny and, and Linda and we kind of wrote the music and I just kind of channeled crazy words and things and stuff would happen and, Talk about love just like came out of my mouth. And then I went back, had sort of the songs, and then I went and and I wrote lyrics to my melodies. And then I, I would also go back and redo the melody and phrasing and all that stuff. So this was a little bit different for me. What I loved about this process was having a deadline because I'd never been in a situation where it was like, you need these lyrics done by Thursday. And I was like, oh, shit. I really, I had to create space that I have not been able to afford myself in my life to really write in a focused, in a really focused manner without walking away and being mom and, you know, having to do other things. And 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 the things that came up for me as I was doing it, like I was saying, like it sometimes came from different perspectives. I would like the way something would sound and then I would have to kind of access my life and kind of my, and, and also the feeling of the song, you know? I have this one song that didn't make the record called Thundercloud and I love this song. And it was because I was just in a situation where um, someone close to me, their, their child was suffering from depression and I just was thinking about these kids and putting myself kind of in their shoes and thinking about like how hard it is right now for them so that became you know like I told a story from like my own personal experience but then created a different world um but it was too depressing for the album <laughs> I'm an I'm such an Aries. I'm a perfectionist. I think being done is the hardest. That's been the hardest thing for me. And the hardest thing too is, but I got over that pretty fast. Was 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 writing really bad lyrics. So like I like you know I love music. So when I I have you know everybody's lyric book in my like you know older like you know Joni Mitchell or Bob Dylan. You know I I love reading people's lyrics. Bruce and the hardest thing for me was getting stuck and then just being like okay I, I just need to like write a, a totally horrible cheesy shitty lyric because I need to just get it out and that was the hardest thing and what I realized was that was the best thing to do was to make it like be okay being bad and then sometimes the things that I thought were bad when I got in the studio I was like you know what that, I like it, you know. I thought I was going to hate it, and I like it. Um, and then a lot of them, I hated it. <laughs> I dragged my brain. But, I mean, I think I just changed a, I just changed a lyric, like, a week ago. And we're, we're like, there. And I was like, no, I got to go lower. But that was the hardest, was, was being okay, like, being bad, and then going in and working with people who are really, have been doing this and skilled, um, and being like, I know this is bad. And the best thing was, is sort of that then having this, that support that our little team that could weigh in and no one changed any of my lyrics. I think for me right now, you know, it's, it's, it's not advice. It's, it's how I was sort of raised up in music with my exes. Um, they never made music for anyone else but them and their fans. And th like being like not uh, not like uncompromising when it comes to music is really refreshing and people can tell. I think that's I mean I I think the best advice is what I've known through people that I've loved. It's just to do it for yourself and then and then give it away and like hope that people, you know, make it their own and not worry about fitting into something. I, I really, really didn't want to do that. 
you know, and then, and then of course, you know, I hope people like it. <laughs> I think with this, that's for me, it's like trusting what, what I like and then hoping that there's people out there who like that too. The other thing is, is, you know, my, my Matt, my ex, um, heard the album the other day and he looked at me and he's like, he's very supportive and very con congratulatory after hearing it. And then he said, very thoughtfully, he went, two years. You need to give it everything you have for two years. <laughs> he goes, you need to go after this album and this like you did when you were younger and you were getting into acting and you went, he's like, this, this album deserves you to go do that. And I was like, that was, that was such an amazing thing to hear from someone I care so much about. Um, and it have such respect for. And it sort of was like, yeah, you're right. I got to just yeah. lean into this for the next two years and hope for the best. Great. And then hopefully I'll get to write music. I mean, I'd like to go into my, you know, the end of my life writing for me or for people. I, I love to write music, you know? So it's like the singing is one thing. I want to sit in a room with a bunch of people and, and beautiful artists and experience the collaborative, you know, writing um, ex experience with them. And it's it's just, there's nothing like it, you know? I was talking to my sister on the phone, she's a songwriter yesterday, and we were going back and forth over this one song that I like and she didn't. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna write music with my sister and it's gonna be the best, you know? And if I can actually do that in my life and have it be something that you know, I'd love to give to other artists. Um, that would make me very happy to have as an outlet for, you know, writing. <laughs>